they were having a busy summer in Greendale, Alf Thompson was getting the hay in. He could just about manage to squeeze between the houses with his load. But then he wasn't counting on something of a traffic jam in the middle of the village. Pat had left his van outside the post office and someone had left a lorry on the other side of the road. It's a job getting through. Steady does it. How's it doing on the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. Oops. I'll have to back up. Right, here we go again. It looks as though Alf is stuck. I wonder who the lorry belongs to. Whew. A right mess I've got myself into. That sounds like Miss Hubbard. She'll soon sort things out. Stop! You'll have to stop, Miss Hubbard. Oh, what's this, Alf? How am I to get through if you block the road with your tractor? I'm stuck, Miss Hubbard. Between Pat's van and this lorry. Well, we can't wait here all day. Where is Pat? Pat? To do, said Mrs. Goggins. Don't take on now. Pat'll be back in a minute when he's done the village letters. It's this lorry, said Miss Hubbard. Who's left it here? There's no sign of a driver. What's going on? said Peter Fall. Has there been a crash? There will be if this lorry isn't moved, said Miss Hubbard. It looks like a builder's lorry. What's it doing in the village? Does that mean we'll have to wait around? I certainly hope not. Pat should be back soon. We need P.C. Selby. Here is P.C. Selby. Now then, now then. What's all this? What's going on? You can't block the road like this, you know. Alf Thompson's stuck. It's not my fault, it's this lorry. And Pat's van. They all talked at once. What a mix-up. Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Now then. Here, this headlight's broken. Now then, let's get things sorted out. Who does this lorry belong to? Pat was hurrying round the village with his letters. Pat! Who's that calling? Oh, it's Sarah, Pat's wife. Must be your forgetting day, Pat. You went off without your sandwiches. Here we are. Special delivery. Just like a parcel, said Pat. I'd better not pop them in somebody's letterbox by mistake. <laughs> You'll be hungry if you do. Bye. Bye, and thanks. Left a bit. They Go still on. hadn't sorted now, the traffic over to your right. Stop. Left again. Now, a little to your right. Straight now, straight. Stop. That's it. All over now. Left, he says, then right. Wish he'd make up his mind. Keep to your right. Back up a little. No, back again. Come straight on. You'll never get through there, you know. Alf, stop! Oh, over to the left! Mind the Come van! On, Alf. Oh, dear. Stop! Back up a little, then hard down on your left. Stop! You'll have to go back again. Now, hard over to your left. No! Ho, ho, what have we here? You can't leave the place five minutes and look at it. Back a little, now, now hard over to you. Oops! Mind the van! No, no, right! Right, I've got me all of a muzzle. I'm staying put till somebody moves that lorry. Hang on, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Ted's lorry? So sorry, everyone, said Major Forbes. Ted's just giving me a hand at the hall. Borrowed the lorry. First traffic jam in Greendale, what? Soon be off. Morning, everybody. Just a word, Pat. 
urgent parcel coming from London. Bought these tin soldiers for my collection. Now take good care of it, there's a good chap, what? Don't you worry, Major, said Pat. I'll see you get it safe and sound, the way you always do. Good man. Bye for now. Bye. You see, PC Selby, it's quite easy when you know how. At last Alf could get on his way. Miss Hubbard decided she had wasted enough time and moved off. Whilst Peter Fogg started up his motorbike again. Leaving PC Selby and Jess with the road to themselves. Pat was helping Mrs Goggins to sort the rest of the letters and parcels. There were two parcels with no address. Mrs Goggins found a label that had come unstuck. Oh, it's this modern glue, said Mrs Goggins. They're forever dropping off. Now, which one shall I put it on? I think it's off that one, said Pat. But that leaves one without an address, said Mrs Goggins. Don't worry, said Pat. As soon as somebody says, where's my parcel, I'll know it must be theirs. Simple. Oh, <laughs> I'd never have thought of that. Goodbye, Pat. Mind how you go. Bye. Now then, Jess, we'd better take the Major's parcel first. It's something special. Toy soldiers. Pat was on his way. Pat arrives at Garner Hall. Won't be long, Jess. Looks as though the Major's busy. I could have sworn the bell was working. Whoops. Uh, anybody in? Hello? Major? Major Forbes? Uh, anyone at home? I'll leave the parcel here. It'll be quite safe. What's that? <laughs> Must be me imagining things. Where is everybody? They must be having a tea break. Pat was on his way. That's just the place for a quiet picnic, Jess. Under that tree. Under that tree will do nicely. Whew, that was a warm climb, but it was worth it. Now, let's see. Tuck in, Jess. There's nothing like a quiet picnic. 
This is a funny sandwich. Oh, no. It's the Major's toy soldiers. How did they get into my lunch? Oh, what a noodle I am. I've got the wrong parcel. I must have left my sandwiches on the hall table in the Major's house. It was this parcel that the address fell off. Come on, Jess. Back to the Major's. He'll be thinking his soldiers have run away. Down at Garner Hall, the Reverend Timms was trying to cheer the Major up, and PC Selby was looking for footprints. Anything the matter? asked Pat. What's going on? Robbery, said the Major. That's what's going on, Pat. My collection of soldiers, gone, all gone, what? Marched off without a sound. But there's a funny thing, the robbers left their sandwiches behind. Oh, no, said Pat. They were my sandwiches. You see, I muddled the parcels up, my sandwiches and your soldiers. I left my sandwiches on your hall table and your parcel of soldiers was still in my bag. And here it is. Pat, you're a genius, said the Major. You saved my new soldiers from the robbers, what? The best of the bunch, too. Good man. But I'm still hungry, said Pat. The Lord will provide, said the Reverend Timms. I'll just pop in for my sandwiches. Now then, Pat, said P.C. Selby, I'll have to ask you for a statement. You can't go in there, Pat. Not till we've looked for fingerprints. But I want my sandwiches, said Pat. Those sandwiches are evidence, said P.C. Selby. Evidence, Pat, that's what they are. Nobody can touch them, not till the CID get here from Pencaster. And goodness knows when that'll be. I wonder if Sarah's got something nice for lunch, said Pat. I'm so hungry, Jess. I think we'll have to pop home and see. Bye. Bye, old chap. Bye, Pat. Home sweet home. Hello, anyone at home? It's me. Oh, you've never lost your sandwiches after all, have you? said Sarah. Not lost, said Pat, but they're evidence now. Oh, well, I never. And Pat had to tell her the whole story of the robbery at Garner Hall. Jess was too busy to listen. I'll have to be on my way, said Pat. There are still lots of letters to be delivered. Mmm. Robbery or no robbery. Now you'll be passing the school just about the right time to pick young Julian up, said Sarah. Save me a trip. All right. I'll not forget. Bye for now. Come on, Jess. We haven't finished yet. In you get. Pat was on his way again. happened to Peter Fowle. Hello, Pat. Having trouble? I certainly am. My front wheel brakes have locked. Nearly threw me over the handlebars. I'll ask Ted Glenn to pop along with his toolkit. Here's something to read while you're waiting. Oh, good. It's my motorbike magazine. Great. Bye, Pat, and thanks. Pat called at Thompson Ground. 
Alf was helping Ted load some wood onto the lorry. Hello, Pat. Pat had some letters for Alf. Come and have a cuppa, said Alf. Dorothy's sure to have the kettle on. He was right. Just the job. Hello, Pat. What's all this about a robbery at the hall? said Alf. Pat had to tell the whole story again from the beginning. Oh, said Pat, I nearly forgot with all this talk about the robbery. Peter Fogg's stuck with his motorbike. He's broken down, about two miles back. Do you think you could give him a hand, Ted? No trouble. I'll pick him up when we've got this wood loaded. Thanks for the tea, said Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat's next stop was at Intake Farm. He met P.C. Selby coming out. Any news of the robbery? asked Pat. Good news and bad news, said P.C. Selby. They caught the robbers on the road to Pencaster, but there's no sign of the collection of toy soldiers. Bye for now. Cheerio, Pat. There was a newspaper for George Lancaster. Pat set out to find him. But where had he got to? Looking for me, Pat. Ooh, you made me jump, George. I thought the robbers were after me. Here's your Hen Farmer's Weekly. Oh, thanks, Pat. Then George told Pat how he dreamt he was being chased by a giant hen, which flew away just before he woke up. It's time I was flying away, said Pat. I'm supposed to be collecting young Julian from school. Now where has that cat got to? He might be after rabbits down the field, said George. He likes my rabbits, does your Jess? They went to look. Jess! 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 He sometimes comes round here. No sign of him, though. Jess! Jess! Pat found Jess with his rear end sticking out of a rabbit hole. Here he is, George. I think he's got himself stuck. Pat took hold of his cat as gently as possible and pulled. Something small and heavy rolled into the grass. George picked it up and looked at it. What's Jess found? said Pat. Looks like one of these old tin soldiers, said George. I used to have a box full when I was a lad. Could do with a bit of a clean. Did you say a tin soldier? said Pat. Yes, why? The robbery. You must have heard. Hang on. Pat thrust his arm down the rabbit hole as far as it would go and brought out a shopping bag. He looked inside and found it full of toy soldiers. Jess has found the loot, said Pat. The robbers must have hidden them on their way to Pencaster. They must have passed your gate. Clever cut, said George. I must get these back to the Major, said Pat. He will be pleased. Keep an eye on these, Jess. Bye, Pat. Bye. Never mind, Jess. The Major will be so pleased to have his soldiers back. I'm sure he'll give you something nice. Pat remembered to pick Julian up from school.
Am I late? Huh, not much, Dad. On the way, he told Julian all about the robbery and how Jess had found the soldiers down a rabbit hole. Garner Hall at last. Ted and the Major were still busy with the roof. What's a fellow doing here again, eh, what? Special delivery, Major. What? In a scruffy plastic bag? Bless my eyes, it's my soldiers! My precious soldiers! Thank you, Pat, you're a stout fellow. And Pat told the whole story yet again. But it was Jess that found them, said Julian. Wasn't it? It's a good place to hide something said Ted, down a rabbit hole. Now, who'd think of looking there? We'd better be off home, said Pat. Sarah will think we've got lost. Take this with you, said Ted, and make sure you look at page two. Er, uh, thanks, Ted. I will. I don't know why Ted wants me to read the paper, said Pat. Bye. Bye, Pat, and thanks again. Julian couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, it's about a reward. For anyone who finds the major soldiers, 500 pounds. Well, I never, said Pat. That'd buy a lot of fish for Jess. It's time to go home and tell Sarah all our news. Let me tell her first. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom,